Okay, so before I jump into it, I just want to very quickly mention that there is bonus content for sale for this tutorial. So there's a reference sheet that shows the head from several different angles, including above and below, as well as a Z tool and an OBJ of the model I'm going to create in this tutorial. These items are not required to follow along, but they will help, as well as help support this channel and allow me to keep creating tutorials like this one. So thank you. Okay, so when starting a head, in my experience, I find it's easier to start with a sphere than with a star. So what I'm going to do is come over to Insert over here and insert this sphere 3D. However, I've only inserted this to tell you it's a bad idea to use this because the topology where it meets at a point here uh, is just going to get in your way and at the bottom here too. So instead, what I like to do is open up Lightbox by pressing the comma and then open up default wax sphere okay and you're gonna get this as polysphere so I'm gonna apply the basic material and then this is what I'm left with okay so from here I'm going to turn on the floor on the x-axis you'll find this underneath draw and then floor there it is right there and I'm gonna turn perspective off and I'm gonna turn it to its side come over to deformation and just shrink that down so if I go to size I'm just gonna bring it down so that it fits nice and neatly in between this grid of squares so four by four like this then I'm gonna mask out this back half and the bottom quarter invert the mask and then drag a transpose line down and with the move I'm just going to lift that up to around, so it's around level like that. Then clear the mask. Then I'm going to drag another mask so that it's halfway up the sphere. And then just leave a little gap here. Okay. Then invert that mask again and drag another transpose line from here across like so. Then I'm just going to rotate that, so with the rotate tool, to about the point where this point meets here. It doesn't have to be perfect, that's fine. So it's like a straight line window, like this. Then I'm gonna get my clip rectangle tool. You'll find that underneath B, C, R, okay? And then using Control Shift, I'm just gonna chop off the front like that. And then clear the mask. Then I'm gonna drag another transpose line from the center here, and then using the move, I'm gonna just squish that in a bit and then from the side just pull this down this is going to be the jaw and then just smooth it a little bit then I'll turn off perspective and turn off the floor now with trim dynamic I will just shape this closer to that of a real skull what you're trying to find here is the shape of the skull, which when simplified looks like a sphere with a wedge attached like this. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to come underneath and create the shape of the chin a little better. And then with my trim dynamic brush, so that's BTD, I'm just going to plane this off like so and smooth it until I get this basic shape of a head like this. This is roughly the shape I was talking about just a moment ago. thinking about my planes. Okay, now I'm gonna put in the ears. So what, how I'm gonna do that is by inserting a cylinder and then shrinking that down to roughly the size of an ear. Then I'm just gonna rotate that and I'm just turning perspective off again and then I'll just, with my move, just squish that in like that. Then I'm going to mask off half of it, invert that, and then 
just squish that in again. Don't worry about squishing in the topology like this because right now I'm going to dynamesh it. I'm just going to leave it where it is. <clears throat> and how thick you want this, it depends on how thick you want the ear. This is going to be a stylized head so it doesn't have to be realistic. Then I'm just going to shape it a little more towards an ear. Like this. Then with my rotate uh, transpose line, what I'll do is just draw a line straight down and then just with the middle button here, I can swing it out like that and put it roughly in place. I'm just going to refine the shape a little bit more now. Then I'm going to solo that out and just create a little mask and this is going to be the, the portion of skin that connects to the head. I invert that and then I'm just with the move tool, the big one like this, I'm just going to drag it in like that. Again don't worry about stretching out the topology because I'm just going to re dynamesh that. Just the shape of the head a little bit. And there we go. Then I'm going to mirror that. So if I come over to deformation, mirror, and then I'll come over to geometry, modify topology, and mirror and weld. Then I'll turn on symmetry and just position them roughly where I want them. And then I've got my basic here shape. And what that's going to do is help me place the other features on the face. Okay, so at this point I'm going to put in a basic shape for the neck, so I'm going to insert another cylinder, turn off perspective again, but turn on transparency, then shrink that down, put it roughly in place, and then just shape it a little bit. In fact, I've forgotten to uh, turn on symmetry, so I'll do that first. There we go. Readjust the shapes. There we go. Then, using the ears as a guide, I'm going to push in some clay for the eye sockets, making sure they look correct from the side. Then I'm going to cut out the side of the nose, like this, and then just cut away a bit more here. And right here is where the And right here is where the cheekbone's going to be. Then I'll, I'll cut away some clay here for the temporal fossa. And make sure this looks correct in a three quarters view as well as above and below. Then what I'm going to do is pull in this bit for the glabella and pull out the tip of the nose like this. Again just making sure the area around the eye is looking okay. Just put in a little bit like so.
So you can see we're starting to form the shape of a skull. However, a skull isn't the exact direction I'm heading in. It's more a cross between a skull and the planes of the head that you can see here. Again, checking from above and below. Making sure the cheeks are the widest point. Just in the neck. Check it from behind. Check this against your skull reference. Check it from above again. Against the skull reference. And Don't worry that the neck and the back of the skull aren't perfectly connected together. In my experience, it's best to sort that out once the meshes are combined. If you need to, change to the skin shade material or any other brighter material just to see what's going on. You can in fact continue using the, the basic material and then come over to your modifiers and just turn up this ambient and it gets a little bit brighter. However, I find it's just quicker to just grab the skin shade and that just helps you to see what's going on in the darker areas. So if you see at the front of the head, I'm struggling to see what's what shape the forehead's making so what I do is just jump over to skin shade and I can just adjust that a bit easier and check it from below as well and I would say I'm pretty much ready to start working on the eyes at this point the proportions might not be perfect but the way I like to work is not to get them exactly perfect straight away. I, I prefer to approach it more how a 2D artist might sketch out a base sketch first then lower the opacity of that layer and then build on top of that. I like to do a similar thing in 3D where I just sort of sketch out where I want things to be and then if I need to adjust the proportions later say these eye sockets weren't quite in the right place I can just drop my subdivision levels and just adjust those accordingly. So really it's just a, an approximation at this point that I will refine as I go along. Okay, so I hope this is useful on how I approach starting ahead.